Hey guys, Peter Steele here back with another video. Now today we will be playing as Communist China. I have been getting a lot of requests to take another look at my Communist China guide and of course I am here to suffer for your entertainment and education. So let's go. Iron Man mode on, historical AI focuses on and let's get cracking. China's pretty bad. So let's just start off with the army. Convert everything to the small template. Juntuan, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Set them on the border with our first target, Shang-Chi and Lin Biao, best general, and of course Mao as the field marshal. These guys can exercise. Of course, we need more troops, so I'm going to train 16 more of the cheapest template we have, the Jun Tuan, and train them at a high priority. Want to spam these guys out as soon as possible. Don't let them fully train, just spam them out the instant they are ready. As a production, just put everything on basic infantry equipment for the time being. We need guns and we need a lot of them. As for research, well, the basics, we're going to start with engineering and production. As for construction, well, not much we can do here. Can't build any factories anyway, so I just build a bit of infrastructure. Usually this gets done by the time we can build some actual stuff here. So we'll build stuff here quicker later on. I guess that helps. As for focuses, let's start with land redistribution. Now, as for the research, I may end up cutting some of this in editing, or I may forget to mention what I'm doing. Just to be safe, I will leave a Word document in the description below what my research order is. It's not set in stone, but I found it to be a pretty good research order to get you ready for the Japanese. Do what you want with that. And let's get going. First off, we're also going to start getting non-aggression pacts with our communist neighbors. The Soviets, the Mongolians, and the Gloria Satanotuva. That is three non-aggression pacts and then we're gonna ask for military access as well what this does is get our relations high enough that we can ask for lend lease and we're gonna need it considering we are several thousand guns short but we never let a shortage of guns stop us just keep spamming these divisions out as quickly as we can we don't need them to have equipment i just need bodies in the field and 25 political power our first batch ready to go retake core state against shang -Chi. Any state will do 125 days and we will make China larger. And yes, I am aware that I am lacking steel. It doesn't matter. It costs us 3.3% production efficiency and it would require 50% of my civilian factories to get rid of that. So I, I don't think that's worth it, to be honest. No, we'll, we'll just eat the lack of steel for now. We'll, we'll fix that later when we're a little stronger. Well, when we're spamming these divisions out, we should be able to get all 24 done in a reasonable time frame. Anyway, 37, 38 political power. Our next target, Shibei Sanma. Justify, core state, any state, and they will be next on the chopping block. China grows ever larger. With land redistribution done, we will continue with literacy programs. Get another research slot in there. We definitely need those. And with electronic engineering done, let's get mechanical computing. More research speed. Literary programs done. We got a new research slot and we with supply being what it is in China, um, I am immediately putting that on trucks. I need trucks to get my troops supplied. So let's get them early so I can start building a stockpile. And the focus can now go on strengthen the general secretariat. Basic machine tools are done. Now we can pick either concentrated or dispersed. I tend to prefer dispersed because we will be getting a ton of new factories and I'd like them to start at a higher base efficiency. There's something to be said for concentrated, but I think think in our case we will be getting a lot of new factories relatively quickly I go with the dispersed if I'm wrong let me know in the comments there we go justification on Shang-Chi is done let's immediately start our next justification retake core state on Xinjiang any state will do really and we declare war on Shang-Chi we still got a pretty hefty deficit of equipment so let's start asking for lend lease while we're here we have some good friends now Mongolia will send us stuff Anatuva will send us stuff usually the soviets don't no soviets don't they don't they don't have any spare guns anyway anyway two is a good start now you could easily battle plan this i think they have at most four divisions but you know you, you kind of want to conserve your energy and most importantly your equipment so what i tend to do here is just slowly micromanage my way to victory as not to throw away too many guns every gun lost here is a gun we won't be able to use to fight the japanese 
companies later on after all. Anyway, that is a couple of guns. Not a whole lot, but better than nothing. I'll just quickly over on Shang-Chi, try to conserve my losses, and then we move on to the next target. And there we go. Shang-Chi done. Take all states. It's all core territory anyway. And now we move on to the next target, Shibe Sanma. Now they have a few more divisions, but not that many. Now what I like to do to deal with them is to draw a small front line at the top here. That's where we'll be attacking from. And then split off about eight divisions. And those eight divisions will man the rest of the front line. Now what usually happens is Shibe Senma has enough divisions to fill the entire front except for this tile. So what we do is park eight divisions across their eight divisions, attack them to pin them at the start of the war and use our 16 free divisions to just really run around behind their front lines and do whatever we want. And we'll be able to quickly capitulate them as well without too much trouble. There we go, the central secretariat strengthened. We've got a lot of political power now, let's spend it. We could go to war economy. I don't think it's worth it considering our teeny tiny economy. What is worth it is going from closed economy to free trade, at least I think so. The bonuses are amazing, plus we don't even have that many resources we'd be giving away. So I think this is a net gain. I think this strengthens the country tremendously. So free trade it is, which I know as a communist, China is kind of weird, but hey, just roll with it. Next focus, agrarian socialism, the best kind of socialism, apparently. We just need to get rid of some of these terrible, terrible debuffs. And justification is done. Simply declare war as usual. Pin all their divisions at the border in place, like so. Should be easy, uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And with all those divisions now busy, we can simply have a bit of a field day with the rest of the units. And like before, let's ask for some free guns. Mongolia will send us some. Tanatuva will send us some. Soviets still, still kind of lacking their own guns, I'm afraid. Yeah. And just try and avoid fighting here. Walk behind the front, take their victory points, circle their army, really. And the AI being the AI, they just cannot help themselves. They, they must be encircled. It is part of their religion, I think. And again, any spare factories straight into basic infantry equipment. Yes, I'm still lacking steel. I'd much rather get a bit of infrastructure built before anything else. You disagree? Let me know. You do you, I do me. Let's see if we can win in the end. So yeah, we're quite casually simply walking around the enemy. Hasn't even taken all that long. It's just a much larger country than Shang-Chi, so it, it is going to take a bit longer to capitulate. With their army completely encircled, I don't think we have much of a threat here. Anyway, we have 100 political power. Let's start getting military high command early. A lot of options here, a lot of good options. Now, I would be tempted to get the infantry expert first. It's very good. We're an infantry-based army. He will definitely help in the wars to come. But our main enemy is logistics. And the army logistics expert also gives us military experience. But he does fix division attrition. And attrition in China is awful. I think getting this guy first will help us have more guns available by the time the Japanese arrived. I could be wrong, but I think I'm not. Division attrition is pretty awful. Agrarian socialism is out of the way. Next step, the Yan'an base area. More infrastructure. Hurrah. Actually, I just had a bit of a miscalculation in our first pick. I went with the army logistics, which is not a terrible choice. I should have gone for the army morale genius. He provides a lot more army experience, which we're gonna need, and the auto supply penalties are almost as good, so mistakes were made. Ah, there we go. They had 19 guns for us. How nice. Again, take all states. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. Now we just line up the army on the Xinjiang border. They are next. Now for future construction, since we do have a couple of civilian factories at this point, let's start with a civilian. Oh no, never mind. All right, we have our trucks researched. Let's also start making them. Gonna assign about two factories to trucks, take them off guns. They will be our priority for now. I'm still not gonna trade for resources. I wanna build an economy first. Speaking of building an economy, after trucks, we'll get construction. All right, justification is done. Simply declare war, retake horse state, and you can you can battle plan your way to victory. To the south here, there's always gonna be gaps. You can just walk past them. Just just battle plan it. Doesn't matter. Set them to aggressive, and once again, we will be asking for some land lease. Mongolia and Anatuva are a great source of early guns. Unfortunately, the Soviets still no. And mechanical computing's done. Let's get support equipment because I do need some support companies uh, moving forward. And dispersed one done. Let's move 
move on to this burst too. Now we have some research slots and some factories. I'm gonna assign, let's see, Shangxi. When the infrastructure finishes, I wanna build a civilian factory there. Why? It's gonna be the highest infrastructure province. That's one from our construction and two more from our focus. So they'll end up at 80%. And in preparation of our future campaigns, I'm also gonna want a supply depot. Like up here in Ordos, a defensible position behind the river in case the Japanese push us back. I don't want it on the border because if we lose the tile, that's it. So this should be fine, along with a railway connecting our main hub to Ordos. And also one from our main hub to uh, this one here that we took off Shangxi. The Yan'an base area is done, so on to the next focus. We will prepare for war. The war support will be lovely. And in case you joined a faction before now, make sure you leave it, because if you don't, and this focus finishes, the government of national defense here gets bypassed and you're kind of stuck. So leave the common turn if you haven't already. I've never joined it. I don't see the point to it. You don't need it, but I can see others doing so. Now things are getting tight and I want the supply hub built first. So I'm going to move that to the top of the queue and I'm going to hit reorganize the railway system. That way we'll get that supply hub done by the time Japan comes. Yeah, timing is getting tight. Once that's done, we'll let the rest of this finish. Don't mind me while I'm just encircling the entire Xinjiang army. I just have a few victory points left and this should also be over with minimal casualties. There we go. Minimal casualties take all states and Red China is looking nice. Very nice. We move all of our troops over to the border with Menkuko and start planning for the Japanese. They will come for us, so we must prepare. Train the troops, make sure they have entrenchment, and we could switch them out from Juntuan to Renmindi here. They're a little bigger, so they have a little bit more bite to them. Of course, we are going to be lacking a ton of infantry equipment, but we should be able to get those supplies fixed. Also, political power. Next pick we are gonna get Zedu Zude this guy army morale genius more army experience should have picked them instead of the attrition guy but you will be getting the attrition guy now so I hope we haven't cocked things up too much all right support equipment is done let's follow that with engineer companies these are going to be vital for your defense against Japan they offer enormous entrenchment bonuses all right prepare for war with Japan is done war prepared next up government of national defense we're also going to start making some some support equipment this is going to be very vital. Let's put two on that. Ooh, we are running out of basic infantry equipment at a rapid pace, but we should still be fine. We should still be fine. I'm also going to need a little bit of steel. I think I can get away with trading one factory without really jeopardizing the rest of my economy. Of course, move the guns to the top. You want to squeeze out as many guns as possible and then uh, support equipment and trucks below that. We need guns above everything else. I find it so satisfying to see that railway track being laid. We also have 40 army experience. I should have done this a little bit earlier. Let's get Spirit of the Army, Professional Army Corps. Cheaper land doctrine, great. More command power, great. But importantly, 5% extra army experience gained. This is going to be pretty big. And we'll use the remaining army experience to slowly build up this division. I want to add eventually artillery to it. I want to add engineers to it. I want to make this a standard 9 infantry, 1 artillery artillery with support artillery and support engineers. Of course, we're going to need a lot of equipment before we can make that happen and a lot more research, but it is a plan. Let's stick to it. Yeah, we should probably move trains up in our priority queue as well. Anyway, there we go. Government of National Defense formed. The other warlords, the ones that are left, should join. And whether it we shall, let's just get them into the faction. Good and nice thick faction in Japan is justifying. They are a coming, boys. They are coming. Now, this will bypass confrontation with the warlords. Yep. Next up, we are going with the rectification campaign. Just get rid of those terrible power struggles, make our country a little bit more stable. All right, with construction done, let's keep going. War is on the horizon though, so I'd rather focus on getting support weapons and improving the infantry equipment a little now. Yeah, we should probably move trains up in our priority queue as well. Dispersed industry is done. We're going to put this one on civilian trains because I just realized I forgot. Yeah, we need 
need we need civilian trains. Our logistics will will require trains in future. That is a lot of Japanese on our border. Fortunately, their main target is China, and we can delay our entry into the war. China tends to hold relatively well in the early few weeks, months of the war, so it's it's not an immediate danger. We don't need to join instantly, so we have some time. We have some time. We definitely want to train these units up, get them equipped, and get their templates changed. Oh, we're gonna need a lot of guns. Anyway, by now we should have plenty of trucks about 250 should do so i'm gonna take a factory off those add them to guns i need a lot more guns oh there comes japan rectification campaign is also done let's grab some free factories here invite foreign investors two more factories that should help us build more factories and uh, that will help us build more guns obviously we're not going to join this war immediately china should be able to hold on for a little bit giving us time to fully equip our troops and we're gonna need that time and um, we're gonna use our political power to not go to war economy. Yes, it's good, but it's not as good as going down from service by requirement to extensive conscription. We have all the manpower we need, so I, I think this is worth more than to go to war economy. I'm gonna cancel invite for investors. We'll do that later. Instead, I'm gonna get Maoism, 10% stability. That will prevent strikes. Very big. I don't want strikes. I think when Maoism finishes or is almost finished, we'll join this war. We should have a reasonable amount of equipment by then. You know how I said that China can usually hold quite well in the early stages of the war? E not so sure about that. All right, we have our engineers. Let's start making some better guns next because we have been <laughs> building trash up until this point just to get everyone a gun. Uh, let's also add those engineers to our templates. Oh, we are definitely, definitely short a lot of equipment still. Oh well, it is what it is. The deficits will be fixed eventually. Once all these troops are trained up, uh, I'm gonna hold off a a little bit longer just to get a couple more guns but i can ask the soviets for support so once these guys are trained up i think we need to be ready to enter the war get their entrenchment up and then we're good to go all right this is it we're about to finish maoism anyway so our stability should be fixed let's answer that call to arms and enjoy the horror that is about to be inflicted on us immediately start asking for guns oh somehow mongolia forgot how guns work and i cannot ask them for guns. All right. Soviets, still no guns. Support equipment? No. Trucks? No. Okay. Tanatuva. Also forgot how guns work. China then? At least China will send me guns. Yeah, that's good. Also going to start increasing our trade. So at least our production will, will run at the maximum capacity and keep building. Once that sieve's done, we'll start churning out more and more military factories. I'm not building in Shangxi proper, uh, proper because this is where I want to build more civilian factories just to increase increase my potential. And what we do now is micromanage the defense. Uh, bubbles will turn red. We'll just use last stand cheese and micromanage units around to get to victory. A glorious victory. And of course, political power will be spent on going to total mobilization next. We should have plenty of manpower available. All right, now that most of the prep work is done, I'm going to leave you to research whatever you want to research. Personally, what I think is good is keeping the industry up to date as usual. Uh, check out radios. Radios are very important for that reinforce rate and start working on artillery and then of course i'm gonna keep the infantry equipment up to date as well and now we sit here and suffer ah there we go people have lend lease for me good good i need those guns now in terms of focus is what you want to do here is have that stability over 50 percent you can pick it up here under abolish the land rent big choices here are opium trade yes or no so you do you i i think permit is worth it even if it does mean you're under 50 percent stability for a while other good stuff here are proclaim the people's republic because you have a nicer name and at least the socialist market economy good things under this focus as well uh down here there's a bunch of bonuses to fighting japan very nice and under foreign investors you could get some british cooperations for better airplanes if that is your sort of thing or send a mission to the soviet union and start working on tanks good stuff all around of course till you get down to the unequal treaties personally i am going to focus on my stability and for the three rules, etc. My first order of business will be to push to Zhang Bei. Why? It's a supply hub. I will pre build a railway from this hub up to the border and then try and strike at Zhang Bei, immediately push through to the supply hub and finish up the railway so I have supply here. And then from there, it's usually a total collapse of the Japanese front. Now we can wait with that until our army is bigger. We can get another 24 divisions out eventually. Or if you see China being over run 
with the naval invasions. That's your cue to start your, your offensive. Also, keep increasing the size of these divisions as equipment arrives. All right, we have the Type 24, better rifles. Now, what I like to do is keep a few, like two factories on basic infantry equipment, like the bone stock useless garbage, just because it has maxed out efficiency and I need guns in the hands of my troops. They don't have to be good guns. I just need guns for my boys and every new factory so the two i've just taken off and everything new gets assigned to the better infantry equipment until they have caught up with efficiency and you think it's safe to switch these out entirely i would keep a couple of factories on basic infantry equipment until you've reached that point you need a lot of guns now the good thing is that with the war being in full swing here we will get tons and tons and tons of army experience my choice here is to go superior firepower grand battle plan works it definitely works but I just prefer superior firepower it is it is great I'm gonna hold off until I get a hundred political power and I can hire the military theorist that would conserve army experience then again I might be better off putting that 100 towards the infantry expert and just eating the extra cost for the time being I think I'll do that besides we are getting plenty of army experience oh look at that number go up Wow. Now that I have researched artillery, let's put it into production. We are definitely lacking some factories. <laughs> Under political power, we're going to spend that on the infantry expert. That should help us hold the line. Oh, happy days. Papa Stalin can send me guns. Let's make that deficit a little bigger. Trick him into sending me more guns. Okay, it's a start. I'm also going to work on some towed anti-air. You never know when it might be helpful. The front line is holding very well without getting more military high command. So I think I'll get a, do a theorist first and and then fill out the rest of the army high command. It's also July of 38 and we're still holding on to Beijing while well, we are massively slowing down. Well, snowing now. We just stopped the Japanese advance. Not one step back. With a little bit of a blitz, I should be able to reach Shang Bay pretty easily. And from there on, it's a clean shot to the Japanese supply line. So once we break through, we have to keep moving. I'd very much like these divisions ready. I'd like this guy to get skilled staffer so he can well, use 30 divisions. And I will very much want the artillery here, but I <laughs> I need a thousand additional artillery pieces. Uh, I have zero right now. Oh, well, by this point, the front line is so solidified. I can let this run on five speed with zero micromanagement. The Japanese aren't pushing. I'll eventually get all the artillery I need. It might take a while. I'm just going to keep asking for the so well, checking if the Soviets have any to send me. Eventually, they'll have some artillery. I'm hoping just getting everything in order. So I'm building up additional. No, I've actually built up additional railways all the way up to the border so I'd only need to plug in the two tiles here. I filled up everything I have with military factories and Shangxi itself is being filled with civilian factories just because it has 80% infrastructure. I could probably get away with putting military factories there though in hindsight. Yeah, I should probably do that. Also working on mobile warfare, big buffs, 100 regiments campaign, also a huge buff if you launch your counteroffensive and I should also get focus on China for even more division attack so we should be able to really roll up the Japanese lines especially if they distract themselves with naval landings now as for political power I'm just gonna pick the silent workhorse I filled out my military cabinet and at this point it doesn't matter what you pick there's some good choices here like the war industrialist uh, popular figurehead might be nice you could start on your air force so it can get some army sorry air experience you will eventually want to have some air when you fight the Chinese but overall it doesn't really matter what you pick at this point China man to beat back that naval invasion. All right, I see a little bit of an opportunity here. This may be a risk, but I have to take it. I am going to launch an offensive and try and take Zhang Bei. So push through here to take Zhang Bei and launch pinning attacks on the flanks to keep this open. And with all of these buffs, like mobile warfare, that's huge. Uh, our army should be able to break through. Oh yeah, look at the Japanese and their allies melt and immediately follow up by building railways behind. All right, we've pushed into Zhang Bei leave divisions behind of course because we don't want to get immediately encircled okay we've taken Zhang Bei that is the local supply hub in our hands good and capitalize now just take territory in every possible direction while we have the opportunity when you have the enemy by the balls you want to 
keep twisting. Just gotta plug in the railway and this breach should be golden. All right, it looks like we might get an encirclement off here. All right, these guys are encircled. Immediately destroy that pocket so we can keep moving. We have to exploit this. Oh, uh, well, I was gonna say we have to exploit this current weakness, but looks like they've already adjusted their front line. But I can still keep pushing. I now have the supply in the region. And if the Chinese are being annoying, you can simply turn off allied supply here so they, they can't really do anything. And there goes Menkukuo. Okay, cool, I guess. Meanwhile, keep pushing the weakest points of Japanese defense. Keep going Going for the supply hubs without supply, the Japanese army will literally collapse in on itself here. And the idea is to cut from the north towards the sea. We want to cut off any possible advance by the nationalists. We want all of Manchuria to go to us. I don't want to share the spoils with the nationalists. They are the next target after all. All right, another massive pocket here. Destroy that, take the land and keep moving. Now, ideally, this flips to us, but it could go to the nationalists as well. It doesn't really matter as long as we can cut them off from Manchuria. Don't want them getting any ideas there. And time for a large scale offensive now. I am going to hit the 100 regiments offensive. So another 25% attack on core territory. And fortunately, all of this is a core. So we can keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I just need to cut off the nationalists. I don't want, seriously, is it is it flipping to the nationalists? <laughs> oh, I hate it when it does that. Yeah, uh, the nationalists are pushing to that territory despite me having turned off allied supply so i have the distinct feeling that this is gonna go very poorly for me this is gonna be one of those horrible runs where the nationalists get all of this land apparently even though we are pushing out of our own territory with our own troops and i have allied supply turned off I'm just gonna limit myself to pushing out from territory i actually control and where it, it does seem to be working as intended but that's a major setback like ideally what i was doing should work you push out from territory you control, head south to the coastline and cut off the nationalist advance. For some reason, the game decided to just give all this territory to the nationalists, despite it being my troops capturing it from my land, but enough complaining. Yeah, look, like even up north now, everything is flipping to the nationalists because why? I don't know. Oh, well, once this stupid railway track's finished, I should have supply in the region again. I can continue my assault. Hopefully, really. Like, seriously, I'm pushing from my territory and it's still going to them. Our equipment stockpiles are holding. Meanwhile, good. We have pretty much defeated the Japanese army at this point. Uh, I can go wherever I want without, well, virtually without opposition. Okay, so that's disgusting. Okay, so end of the day, we are still walking away with a reasonable chunk of China, pretty much just lacking Jehol and East Hebei. So most of Manchuria should still go to us. That's good. It could be better, but it's okay. Once we push Japan completely off the continent, we should still get the white peace event to fire. There we go. Communists and Japanese have signed a white peace. Uh, yeah, okay. White peace has fired. End of the day, we came out of the is pretty okay. Uh, in a perfect world, we would have gotten Jehol as well as East Hebei. It is what it is. We got most of Manchuria. We have a decent industry going for us and a lot of extra land to build military factories in. We're going to use that extra land to, of course, build more military factories. We're going to keep producing all of that good stuff and squeeze out infantry divisions. We want about three or four armies worth lined up on the border with China before we strike at the enemy. They are the enemy now, but we are not quite ready to reveal our hand. I've also started production of fighters. I will start a production of close air support as well. And with those things combined with our army, we should be shredding the Chinese. Even if we have fewer divisions than them, our divisions are better. We'll have air support and we'll have artillery. We are going to tear through their units. Plus, we don't need to worry about occupying all this land. It is our core. So it is rightful communist China clay. So to set up for this uh, eventual invasion of mainland China, I'm building another supply hub around this area because this is a supply dead zone. I'll hook it up with railways, keep building military factors, keep producing stuff, and we should be able to overrun them relatively quickly, but uh, we have time. At least three armies out the door because it's a very long front line and nationalist China does have quite a few troops. Our army is almost done. I've taken my time to casually build up once these units are deployed. We will head down our focus tree and pick up infiltration. This will lead 
lead to some very interesting decisions that we can use to really tear into nationalist China. Personally, I've just been going down the Soviet focus tree to end up at the bottom of the Chinese focus tree. One thing I will say, we will use infiltration to declare war on nationalist China. Their little friends here will get pulled into the war, but there is a risk that nationalist China, being the only major in that faction, will capitulate before both Yunnan and Huangxi clique have contributed enough. And it is entirely possible, if you're unlucky, that these two or one of these two is not included in the peace deal. And to be able to eat them later on, do not progress down to combined arms warfare, because that will bypass, negotiate the unequal treaties. And if you're at war with the nationalists, it will also bypass one China policy. And this is essentially a free war goal. So you, you don't want to pass up this free war goal. All right, with infiltration done, uh, focus wise, just pick whatever doesn't really matter anymore. What we need now is these decisions. These on map decisions will allow us to infiltrate certain locations and we can follow up that decision with launching a communist uprising. What this does, and this has changed, this used to be different. What this does now is make you leave the faction you're in right now and immediately declare war on China, which is good for two reasons. One, it means China is in a faction and they cannot join the allies. So that problem is gone. Plus, since they are in a faction, they don't pick up guarantees like that. So they will not get guaranteed by the allies. Leave the faction by clicking that button and declare war on that faction. Uh, this will pit us against three enemies instead of one, but it's perfectly all right. Our divisions are better, our generals are better, and we have the air power. If you've been doing any sort of preparation by now, you should have a reasonably competent air force. China has virtually nothing. You have a supply network. You have well-trained, well-equipped divisions. I know these are not perfect, but we are somewhat limited by supply as well as the terrain. So these will work just fine to crush the Chinese. Plus, their entire army is out of position. They're all stuck on their borders, which they think is just the coastline and, and Tibet here. They're not looking at us. So the moment we click that decision, we can walk into unopposed territory. The nationalists will have to completely redeploy their army and we can make excellent use of that to do a massive land grab, shorten the border, and then just start grinding away at their troops. It will be costly. I won't say it'll be easy, but we will come out of this victorious. So in 30 days, we'll have this place infiltrated and then we can launch the communist uprising. You could infiltrate multiple places and what that does when you launch the uprising is it damages the infrastructure and military factories in those provinces. I don't think that's worth it. Actually, I do have enough equipment to uh, get another army trained. I'll get these in training, just produce more stuff. I can then throw these out whenever I want to or delete the, or delete the uh, training line if I run out of equipment. More troops is always nice when you're fighting China. They just have infinite numbers sometimes. And since we've also maxed out our land doctrine, I don't think I want to keep professional officer corps. Yes, it's great to get more army experience. We'll get plenty of it. I'm thinking getting proper heritage here. Why? The cavalry doesn't matter. The unit design cost doesn't matter. But supply combat penalties on core territory, that's a big one because all of China is core territory. And supply in China is not great. Anyway, we've infiltrated. Now we launch the communist uprising and in 60 days we unleash hell. Yeah, I've just force deployed those units I had queued up. I'm um, thinking more units will allow me to get more land in the early days of the war and then just keep going on that momentum. The Chinese do have a lot of divisions, so I don't want to I don't want to go in this too weak. I know these are green, but it doesn't really matter. And in two days, one day and yo. So what has happened? We've left the faction. We've declared war on our former faction. I have Mao here with a large field marshal order set on aggressive and he will immediately start exploiting the gaps in the line and just take as much land as possible. We can also join the Soviet Union. Might as well. I'm not going to join any of their wars, but it will allow me to easily go and help them out later. Besides, I like having friends. And now I can pretty much battle plan my way to victory here. There, There is nothing they can do to me. Sure, they have a lot of divisions, but ours are better. We have the air power. Just got to get a couple of good encirclements in and we'll destroy whatever's left of their military. And every province we take, we just get stronger. We have cores on all of this. Instant access to additional factors. 
factories as well, which is nice. China's already halfway towards capitulation. I think Yunnan is involved. They have a little bit of participation here, but Huangxi still isn't. So I either need to punch through this section of the line where supply is virtually non-existent, or I need to roll up the line all the way around the coast to then touch Huangxi clique. Not ideal. I don't think I'll be naval invading anywhere either because I have no ships. Oh god. I could just build a strat bomber or two and just bomb them to get them involved, I suppose. And after the initial shock, it does feel like the nationalists are starting to put up a bit of a fight. Uh, we should still easily win this. We have almost total dominance in the sky and I'm building more airplanes by the minute. New plan. I'm just going to build some transport planes to ease supply in the region. I know it's not going to be enough, not after all the nerfs the supply has gotten, but it's going to be something. Yunnan is firmly involved in this war. So when China capitulates, Yunnan will be involved, but Huangxi still, still no contribution, virtually no contribution. So I would need to touch them a little more. Yeah, the fighting's gone on for long enough. I think Huangxi clique is actually involved. They have some war participation. They have some casualties to us. Uh, I'm just going to grind it out. Funny how our manpower has only gone up as long as, for the duration of this war. Every province we take is a core. So we just get stronger and stronger the longer this goes on. 85% towards capitulation. I think once the area around Nanjing falls, that's it. Overall, we are definitely in control of this and we're just bombing them to bits. And there we go. We've taken Nanjing and we got a peace deal. And due to the way peace deals work, apparently Wangxi clique is not involved. Okay, so I, I initially finished this run by defeating nationalist China and not getting Huangxi involved. I managed to find an autosave from a few days before before the capitulation. I'm gonna halt my offensives. Uh, when Nanjing falls, it's over. And I'm just gonna focus everything I have on taking any province at all from Huangxi. Okay, we're about to take a tile from Huangxi. Technically, that should be enough to get them involved in the peace deal. Yes, we have a taken a tile from Huangxi clique. Mass offensive now. If Nanjing falls, that's it. There we go. There goes the peace deal. A lot of free stuff. Wonderful. And yes, Yunnan, Huangxi clique, and and nationalist China all involved in this peace deal. All we have to do is take all states. The European states don't matter. And with this peace deal, we end the game and the people have stood up. Though I think technically we need to finish proclaim the People's Republic. But as you can see, communist China is definitely 100% not overpowered. We are in total control of China. We have an actual industry. We have good research, good production. We're now in the Soviet Union's faction. So so we can come to the common turns aid and when Mao marches his army to the eastern or well for us it's the western front the German advance will grind to a halt. I'm just gonna play a little bit longer so I can proclaim the People's Republic and with that the People's Republic of China has been proclaimed and the people have stood up. Now we could continue playing this but I think we have achieved our goals. We are the People's Republic of China. We have all of the Chinese core territory. Yes I know we're lacking the European port cities, but you don't need these. Trust me, you don't. And with our help, our communist brothers are able to push the fascists back and Germany will crumble under the weight of the Chinese army. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful and I hope you can start enjoying playing in China once again. The supply is awful, I know. But if you like this video, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Also, check out this next video. I'm sure you'll love it. See ya.